morning everybody uh people rusik here i uh as some of you may have heard i will be taking on a race for the ages on september 3rd through the 5th uh, for those of you that aren't sure what that is it is a race where each participant gets one hour for every year they have traveled around the sun so i get 52 hours this year to run as many times as I can around a one mile course. Now, I already know what you're thinking because a lot of you have already told me what you're thinking. I've been called stupid. I have been called insane and crazy. And to be honest, I may be a little bit of each, but there is a method to my madness, which I'll get to. You know, the beauty about this event is that average age is in its 60s. Uh, the oldest person this year is 90. Last year at 89, he completed 115 miles. Uh, when you think about that, 115 miles. I know people a lot younger that have not done 115 miles walking in an entire year. Uh, there are seven in their 80s, and there are 33 in their 70s. So maybe I am looking for something. Uh, maybe it's the fountain of youth. Um, I know a couple places that it's not. It is not sitting on your couch. It is not in the bottom of a shot glass. It's not in a beer bottle, and it's not in the bottom of a prescription bottle. So if I'm crazy, uh, then maybe I am. But, you know, history is riddled with people that were called crazy. And no, I am not trying to discover new lands or... You know, colonize Mars or even walk a tightrope across Niagara Falls. But maybe I am trying to discover something and go in and hanging out with some people that are doing some pretty amazing things. Um, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, as some of you know, I started the Weather Deathly podcast about two years ago. It was a way for me to highlight some of the amazing things that some of our, uh, those in their twilight of their life supposedly are doing um i am honored i was able to publish 31 episodes talk to some pretty amazing people um, i can't thank them enough for taking time out of their schedule to do it the problem is my work-life balance wasn't so balanced and i ended up losing focus and wandered off course so i've taken some time off so part of me going to this event is to try to get that back. Um, I need to try to get my mojo back. I want to get back in and dig into it and spend time with these people to try to see what I need to do uh, to get back to doing it. See, part of my issue was I lost my focus of why I was doing it. I originally, I'll be honest, was selfish. I did this podcast to try to help myself, and then I figured, okay, let me open it up and see if other people are interested. And I had a decent following. I appreciate all the feedback I got. But then over time, I started to focus more on the production of it, more on uh, the technical aspect that I lost sight of just being there and listening and doing the event. So I'm gonna move forward with it uh, I'm not sure what capacity yet, but I'm going to view it as kind of like this 52-hour event I'm doing. Um, people were worried. Pete, are you, I can't believe you're going to go for 52 hours. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going for 52 hours. But I will say I am going to run a few miles, I am going to walk a few miles, and I am going to rest. And I'm going to view the podcast the exact same way, where we may get a couple in a row, I may take some time off and do one every other week, or I may... You know, just take some time off to kind of recharge. Uh, so hopefully that is good enough for for you. Um, I'm, my hope is, again, that I can bring it back and make make it beneficial for myself, for those that have, want to tell their story, and any of you that want to listen. The second reason I'm doing this event is basically for education. I've been a physical therapist for longer than I have not been a physical therapist. And over that time, um, I have had the 
privilege of working with the people of palliative care and hospice. And unfortunately, I've become more frustrated over the years about the stigma and misconceptions that are associated with hospice. I was recently told by somebody whose family member really could benefit from hospice that hospice meant morphine. I'm telling you right now, hospice does not mean morphine. Hospice means going out in your own terms, taking that last mile the way that you want it to be to your finish line. And it's actually more for the family. I think we do a disservice when we don't, um, when we don't get people in the hospice sooner. So one of the things that I want to do through this event is to help raise awareness on the benefits of palliative care and a hospice care. So with the great folks at Authority Care Collective, which provides hospice services in Alamance and Guilford County here in North Carolina, my goal is to provide information and also try to just help dispel some of those misconceptions and the stigma associated. So I will be providing links throughout my uh, journey over this time. And then we are working on right now having uh, someone come out and, or actually to do a Zoom session. And what we're gonna do is it'll be take place on Sunday sometime. I'll try to post some information as we get closer. We'll put it up on uh, Facebook Live and basically just talk about what hospice and palliative care can do. Now, the next thing too is anybody who knows me, I've been doing uh, marathons and triathlons for about 10 years now, uh, actually probably about 12 years now. And one of the things I've always done is basically connected it with, with a charity. So I, it was kind of my get out of jail free card. When I did an event, my wife would say, well, are you at least doing it for charity? So yes, Marissa, everything, as she knows, I've done for charity. So uh, this year, I want I am partnering with Authority Care Collective to raise money. And Marissa said to me, she goes, when she heard I was doing 52 hours, she's like, you know, you don't always need to uh, do an activity to uh, raise money. And my answer is, yes, I do. Um, actions speak louder than words. So... I am more willing to make a donation to somebody if I know that they're willing to sacrifice, that they're willing to be invested in whatever that charity is. So for me, it's going to be for Authority Care. So I do have a fundraising page set up. It is www.authoricare.org backslash run. That's A-U-T-H-O-R-A-C-A-R-E dot org, O-R-G, backslash run. I will post the link below. You know, I think what happens is that we, you know, COVID should have taught us something over these past few years. Um, we basically lost a lot of time. So what I do... I want to basically bring up two quotes to kind of finish here. First quote is, I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then the second quote is by Dr. Seuss. Sometimes you'll never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. I want you to think about that. Sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Uh, it's funny how I'm kind of doing everything for authority care and for hospice. You know, too many times we wait till it's too late to try to mend relationships and to basically spend time. We're in such a rush to get from one event, one activity to another. So here's my, here's my challenge. My challenge to everybody is that we work to take a little more time to maybe extend every conversation another 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe extend that activity two or three hours just so we can be with that person. My question for everybody who's stuck around so far is, 
what will your next 52 hours be? And when you get to the end, when you look back, will it be filled with awkward conversations, divisiveness, uh, excuses, poor choices, um, and just basically a mountain of regret. So what will you do moving forward to actually value each moment? You know, we're not guaranteed anything. Part of the thing that I think every one of us realizes is that there's no guarantee. You know, my prayer is that when it comes time for my family members or for myself to take that last mile is that um, hospice and palliative care can be involved. You know, that would be a blessing. For me, hopefully it's after I've set the record of miles at a race for the ages at age 92, but my hope is that we have time to spend together and be able to all go out on our own terms. Too many times we hear people who don't have that opportunity and they don't have that time to say goodbye. So, and, and that pains me. I hate to see that. So my hope is that we all have that opportunity. So we shouldn't be fearful of it. We should accept it and actually spend that time. So my goal is that each one of us doesn't wait till that last mile to basically have those conversations and just be there with somebody. So we are about six tenths of a mile right now that you've walked with me. So I wanna propose a challenge to everybody, the one mile challenge. What I want you to do is I want you to either walk with somebody either literally or figuratively one mile. So if you're gonna walk with them one mile, it cannot be filled with political discourse, uh, things that lead to arguments. It needs to be quiet. Just sit there, enjoy that time over that mile. Could you make it a whole mile? And no, you're not allowed to run seven minute miles. You need to walk. Can you walk with somebody, take in nature, take in just the atmosphere where you are and just the presence of that person? Can you do that for a full mile? And then figuratively, Will you spend, say, a half hour with somebody? Again, same thing. No music, no TV, no distractions. Just spend time with them. And I think you'll, you'll find a better connection with them. You do not need to argue every single time or let everybody know that you're right. So let's go ahead and spend that time together. And then that way I think we'll, we can be in a much better place and not have to have all this discourse that we see all the time when you turn on the television that's all we're getting so i think let's try to avoid that let's turn off the noise and let's just spend time together so this is my challenge to all of you i hope you're willing to accept it a um, couple things we can do please share this video please donate to my fundraising page or to another hospice uh, agency near you i appreciate it they do such great work. I think we need to know their value. Um, and let's, let's do that. And then the other thing is if you're willing to take the challenge, please use the hashtag, hashtag my mom, or, or sorry, please use the hashtag one mile challenge. And the other thing is for me, I use a hashtag my miles or four as a way to remind me of why I do the things that I do. For me, normally it's been for the journey. My miles are for discovery. So, peace, God bless. Thank you for taking this journey with me. I'm at seven tenths of a mile. My plan is just to continue to walk. I ask you to walk with me. And thank you.
Lap 1. 1911. 